Hello and welcome to the show. So, last couple of weeks I've been doing these very outrageous things on the program. We've been having debates. Uh, we're talking about things that are really affecting people. And the one thing we realize is that people are in dire need of therapy in some way or another. So just one step towards that, uh, I've got Shamima Das here. She's an illustrator and she does illustrations like this, Piazma Husna. And it's for adults, which I find which is fairly interesting and, and, th and that's the kind of thing. And we're going to show you some close-up visuals of that. But I want to find out what this is all about, what's the need for it, why she's been doing it, and how you can benefit from that. Shamima, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. First time I'm chatting to an illustrator. So it's going to be an interesting journey for us in this 26 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very amazed. I just picked this up and these designs look very intricate for me. And it's not, uh, maybe I'd attempt to color them in, but to draw them might be an issue. So it, yeah. I want to sort of take you from the start. Mm -hmm. What makes you an illustrator? Well, you're the only one I've met in my life, by the way. So, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the, the, there's, I'm, it's a, a, com a combination deal of artist and illustrator where an artist will do whatever work inspires them and what, but if they feel like drawing a peach, they'll draw a peach, that's fine. But when illustration comes to mind is where it's for a very specific reason. And when someone commissions you to draw a peach um, or someone commissions you to draw, um, for instance, in, with my line of work, I was a textbook illustrator for Quite a, a bit textbook of illustrator. Yeah, textbooks. That's interesting. So but, but, but maybe you should just take me way before that. Maybe. When did it all start? Or mm. Were you like this, this kind of uh, kid in school that was drawing everything that came to mind? I was always drawing in the, in the columns of my books, especially during physics. So, um, so while, while, the, while the lecture was busy, well, you were drawing? I was busy drawing. Well, listening as well, because you have to listen. You don't need to justify that. Yeah, you, you have to listen <laughs> to past <laughs> physics. Um, but. Yeah, I've, I've always been drawing since a kid, and my parents were very encouraging of it. And they take us to, to art galleries as well, That's and amazing. my dad paints as well. Your dad paints, but he's a doctor. Yeah, and he's he a, a medical doctor, yeah. but he paints, he's, mm. he's a historian, he, he does lots of things. Mm. Um, so I've always been drawing, and um, yeah, I just... <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I love the idea, and I, I, I like the idea that you're saying that your parents promoted that because mm -hmm. I've been watching lots of clips recently and I think people around the, around the world have been coming to this quick realization that children need to be who they are. And I know that Professor uh, Ken Robinson, Sir Ken Robinson has been talking about this, that um, there needs to be this level of creativity and sometimes people and children do things that they need to do. And one's ability is not only determined by how well you do in physics and, and mathematics. So I'm happy that they promoted the fact that you wanted to draw. And especially, I'm, I'm very grateful to them because at the time, I studied graphic design. And at the time, that was sort of something very mysterious in my community, like, what is graphic design? If you had any interest in art, it was a hobby. Mm. It wasn't anything you could use to make money to... Great. to yeah. And it's always yeah. about that. Always. It's always about that. Well, it's, it's, you know, you do need money. But the thing is, it wasn't very well known at the time. And they supported me studying graphic design at Cape Tech, where I majored in illustration. Um, and then I worked at a small advertising agency, which is gone now. Mm. And I worked at a children's publish, uh, publishing agency. And I've also worked at a comic publishing agency. So it's all been using the skill that I, I, I got from graphic design because it was quite a varied skill. You can use it for lots of different things, magazine layouts or doing illustration or logos. or It's, it's a uh, very adaptable kind of. So, uh, so but you're like, you like really into it. Like people do things because they need to do it or they're into something. And you look like you're into it. So does this mean that? when you go out and you're walking about in the road or in the shopping center, you look at things and you contextualize that. Uh, so when you see other people's designs, does it like, it could have been rounder, could have been that square, I don't know. Yes, I mean, I, because of the, the, the design aspect of things, when I see people who, I won't mention names, but they redesign their logo and I'm like, why? It wasn't broken, why did you, you know, why did you change it to this which wasn't working? So your eye is always looking at things from a bit of a different angle going, oh, that texture's nice, it might be nice for the background of something, then you take a picture of the texture, or you just notice color combinations, that kind of thing. Mm. So uh, when it comes to illustrations, uh, 
do you feel that um, there's a bigger story to illustrations? I know that for you doing it, there's probably a level of therapy in it. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that people, uh, to pass time, and also one thing is to pass time, but the other one is to do something meaningful. Um, tell us a bit about that. In terms of uh, illustration and its meaning for me? Mm. Well, the thing is, in, in, um, in life, I, you have to take the opportunities that you are given. And I'm lucky enough to be able to pursue something I enjoy and have a bit of, of, of natural inclination towards. So my idea was that because I'm in this situation, I'm going to use it. Because some people aren't lucky enough. They, they have other responsibilities that they have to, to deal with. So the, while they might be a passionate musician, after hours, during the day, they have to be a, a pharmacist or a teacher or whatever their day job requires. So I was really trying to make my day job and my night job, my whole job. Yes, so that means that you don't work for a day in your life because they say that, they yeah. say that, they, they say that people that do what they need to do or want to do, mm -hmm. they're not actually at work. Like, like a lot of people, That's not true. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I tend to not be, I feel that, no, no, I, I, think what you, I think you're just quickly misunderstanding that one. It means that if you're doing what you love doing yeah. and you're doing it as your job, you're not actually at work, you're doing what you do as a passion. Yeah. It's the same for me being at the channel and being on the show. People assume that I'm driving to work, but being on the show and dealing with our staff and being part of the channel is actually me, it's what I want to do. So I don't feel like I'm going to work. So people say you spend all your life at work. I'm not yeah. actually working, I'm doing what I want to do. Well, I think for yeah. me, I, I understand that completely. Yes. Um, but I think for, for certain aspects, for instance, with illustration, mm. it's not always just one a straight path of being able to draw exactly what you want to draw yeah. all the time. There are certain compromises you have to make and some projects where you're like, why am I drawing this? You're drawing this because you need to feed your cats. Um, so there, it's, it's, but it's much more enjoyable and fulfilling mm. than uh, in furthering someone else's dream mm. and working for somebody else. Mm. It's, it's, it's very difficult. Mm. Um, I think that that quote is often misused to make mm. it seem as though it's going to be easy. No, no, of course but, no, it's uh, not. So, so, so interesting. I think it makes it more worthwhile. Correct, yes. So now we look at your actual illustrations and uh, I've been scanning through some of the things which we're also showing our viewers right now. And uh, when you look at them, I, I find something interesting. So l let's just take this one for example. So tell me something. When you actually embark on doing this particular one, do you see this before the time in your mind or do you start at the point because i can't do this so i need to just try and understand how that's done um, do you see something um, as a starting point and you say let me start with this point and it develops into something or do you say i got the entire picture in mind and i'm now just taking it from 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 thought pattern mm -hmm. uh, from a cognition point of view and i'm now transcribing that onto paper how does that work well each well, each type of illustration is different. This was a very specific kind of illustration because it dealt a lot with um, geometry. Mm. So with geometry, it's, it's a very difficult um, one to visualize from the start. Mm. Like I so had it develops as it goes along. Yeah, this was very developmental in terms of, uh, because it was a collaboration between my brother and I, and also just marking, marketing to see which designs work better and which appealed more to people. So the, the designs grew. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a basic sort of idea for them in the beginning. And sometimes the idea changed completely. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the idea stayed the same but had modifications. So for this one, I wouldn't say I had it in my mind. I had sort of an idea of, I want the pattern to be like this and this. And now let's, I had a vague idea and then started working on it. Mm -hmm. Um, but with other illustrations, they all have a different evolution. Interesting. So, um, so effectively, you go from doing your normal illustrations in terms of textbook stuff, and that could be whatever it might be, diagrams or whatever it might be. And you come out with this one called the Asmal Husna, the 99 Names of Allah. Mm -hmm. And just for our, our non-Muslim viewers, um, Allah in Islam has uh, various manifestations of his, of his name and his attributes. And and these are all contained in, in the Arabic text and they all have different, fairly totally different designs, if I may say. And what strikes me about this is the fact that you say adult coloring book. Now, most of the time when 
in my little bubble that I live in when we talk about the cal uh, coloring book. You're talking about kids. And so, so you're talking about something else here. Tell us a bit about that. Well, adult coloring is huge in the States and overseas. Um, in fact, the lady oh, that... We just delay it again. Quite, it's, it's only starting here now, yeah. uh, which is good for me. Yeah. Um, but the, the lady I re read recently that is, is, was the pioneer of this, Jana Battersford, she's actually been, I don't know if the word is nominated for an OBE mm. in the UK mm. for her contribution. Mm. And this is from adult coloring books. There are massive, massive, massive mm. overseas. People have huge storages of pencil crayons and gel pens and there's clubs and coloring in parties. And there was actually a shortage of pencil crayons at one point because they couldn't keep up with demand. That's interesting. Mm. So, so I think that um, many adults are going into it from a therapeutic point of view, and that's passing time, doing something, and then people are perhaps framing these things and putting them up, or as you said, giving them as gifts. And what's what's amazing with this, because I'm I'm part of a few groups, is that people's skill is exceptional, and they'll, they these are probably people that said, "Oh, I can't draw, I can't color in." But it, it's, it's all about really enjoying the process. Um, because like you say, a lot of it is for, is for therapy, it's for relaxation, for de-stressing, and it's also a way to let them let their creativity out. Uh, the way I described it on my launch is that it's a, it's a partnership between me and you. I've provided you with the inks, now you can go and color however you please. Mm. And people shouldn't feel sort of stressed and, and try and make it perfect with the Mona Lisa. It's, it's all about enjoyment mm. and creating something for yourself. And at the end of the day, you can put that on the wall or give it to your mother and say, this is what I made for you. So, um, yeah. Have you seen some of the works? Uh, so this gets out on the road and, and it's for sale now. And we're going to talk about that now. But. Um, have you seen some of the works when they come back, for example, when they are colored and stuff like that? What's your thoughts about I that? I have. It's, it's, it's amazing because... Some are not disastrous. Sorry? They're not disastrous, some of them. I Look, if I had to do I one, I can tell you it's going to be disastrous, but, I, but that's fine. I've never seen any of them as disastrous yeah. because for me, it's, you can see how excited people are about yes. it and you can see the enjoyment. I mean, some of the colors are not the colors. I'm also did this. I must be honest with you. I'm, 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 I'm very tempted to open one of them and just start during my, my my lunch break because maybe that would bring that blood pressure down. I yes, <laughs> yes, it it would. It, I mean, the thing is, there's nothing stopping you. It's yeah. it's. I find what people do in in they do it when they have a few minutes and they just they don't know what to do. Then they'll just sit and color in for a bit and yes. it calms them and. Um, I was amazed though that because I thought it was also f quite predominantly female, which I think it is. Yeah. But there's quite a huge, uh, or at least quite a a, um, a fair amount of male um, following of of adult coloring as well. Um, so it's it's not just a, a female thing. Correct. Yes. Now I noticed that you have uh, some other formats here, mm -hmm. and uh, let's uh, let's just go for this one. And uh, this particular one is. A sort of very hard cover. It's it's fairly big. Um, mm. I don't know what size is it. This is sort of A3 size. Yeah, it's an A3 one. So, what's the purpose of the bigger one? Is it uh, the bigger one was it was initially it was just an experiment mm. to see whether people would enjoy the bigger one or the smaller one, and there's been quite a demand for both. Mm. I think the bigger one, perhaps, if it's um, for the elderly who need maybe a, a, a bigger kind of of canvas, or if people wanted to do, uh, have bigger pictures to frame than the, the smaller A4 one. So it's it's an experiment that's actually paid off quite well. Um, I, I enjoy the, the bigger format. And uh, I think that also for those people that want to do the art themselves mm -hmm. and pop that into a frame and put it up on the wall, mm -hmm. I think the bigger one perhaps has a better application uh, for all of that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how do people get in touch with you uh, where is these books available so that they can start? Can they order online, for example? They can order directly from me, uh, from my website. We stock at Timbuktu Books, at the Dean Store, at the Purple Circle, uh, which is an online store in, in Joburg. And we're looking to get them into more uh, bookstores and libraries. Um, but it's still early days, so if anyone is interested, they can definitely contact me and we can arrange We're going to have those details on the screen as we go along in the interview. Shamim, I want to go one step forward, mm -hmm. and that's um, tell us about the putting together of this work, because I think that uh, we take things for granted. Uh, 
this is actually a lovely design. And uh, we'll just show our viewers that they, uh, we take things for, for granted from the point of view that um, we're looking at a few designs in a book. But if I look at one of these, and especially the one I'm looking at right now, all these intricate pieces, uh, there's a bit of work that goes in all of this. How long did it take you to put all of this together? Well, the, this book had a very specific time frame because we wanted to get it done in time for Ramadan because we thought it would be the perfect time to launch and have the, the more interest in it. Um, this one took about, I would say, this one actually took less than a month, which is very fast, but I was working on it intensely. Less than a month? Less than a month. To put um, all, to put and, and how many illustrations do we have in here? It's 20 coloring pages and two extra coloring pages. That's interesting. Yeah, so so um, this was this was done really but quite. I noticed that you say on here that it's um, the 99 names, well, but volume one. Yeah, but it's only 20. So, t so there's 20 inside so here. The so we have volume two and three coming the, the, up. The following volumes I hope to spend more time on. Yes. Um, because I prefer doing that than doing something very quickly. But this was put together quicker than I usually would. My, my previous book, which was uh, hand drawn, took me about four months to do. Um, that Shams Flights of Fancy, it's got, it's, it's more of a quirky adult coloring book but with a kid kind of flavor. What defines an adult coloring book and a kid's adult well, it's, book? It's actually, if I look at the, the forums and stuff, it's very blurred because some adults decide, mm, let's, let's color in some kids' books. Mm. Um, it's usually the amount of the subject matter yes. and the amount of detail yeah. in, in yeah, the Yeah, of color. course, so a kid's one would be like uh, just the face with the, the body and the yeah, the legs something kind of quite thing. simple. Where this would be more appearing to be very calligraphy kind of thing, mm. the designs. Yeah, mm. the, the adult ones are, are usually more complex. You find very, very complex ones. You find less complex ones. Um, but they're more, in, in terms of content, adult um, orientated. Yes, but I noticed the complexity in my view mm -hmm. and my minor understanding of, of coloring in would be um, uh, a range of complexity. For example, uh, if we look at uh, this one uh, at the moment, uh, yeah, this one seems simple. to be uh, pretty simple. And if we go down to that's to actually yeah, this is one that those that's one of the two extra ones. Yes. So and then if we look at something which I saw a couple of minutes ago, like that, that yeah. would have a bit of more work involved in that one. Uh, so I think the the range of complexity changes mm -hmm. uh, also for various people and perhaps what they find more interesting. Yeah, it's, it's also to, to just ch uh, change things up in the book. You don't want to have one, just one type of, of illustration all the time, just to make it interesting for people. Uh, but we're theming the books as well. So this book was more of a, a sort of abstract tile thing. The next book we are aiming to have a nature theme. So it'll have geometry, but also with the theme of nature in it. Shreema, I think that uh, it's very rare to uh, we know there's a lot of people. They have lots of talents in the world, and they have lots of ability and skill. And sometimes those skills are suppressed uh, because um, society obviously believes that do well in maths and science, and and you know that pays off and that sort of thing. But uh, people are suppressed in a way, and I think that you found the balance with uh, doing all of that and the support, and then you have um, and you can delve into whatever you want to after that. But uh, there's a host of people that probably have those desires watching the show that want to do what they want to do, want to be creative. And they probably feel trapped and they, they want to do what, what you're doing. And that's to get published because that's another phase in illustrations. It's easy to, I suppose, sit at night, do some sketches. But then to get published is another, is another issue. It's a long journey. I can only imagine it's a long journey. Um, what's your advice to people out there? And I'm not going to say youth. I normally say youth. But there are people out there that are probably 70 or 80 years old that feels, hey, I want to go and do this. And you can. What's your, what's your advice to them? I would say just do it. Mm. Just do it. Because a lot of people... Sound like Richard Branson. <laughs> but th th that is actually the key to all my projects has been... Because I'm someone I can, I can talk a lot of talk and I have wonderful ideas, but you never do it. Mm. So the key thing is to start and just do it. And also, if you're someone like me, I am quite a perfectionist. So in my process, I have this idea that if I don't do it perfectly, I'm not going to do it at all. Mm. And I read a very good saying in this book that says, it is better to do than to do well, which is to say, if you want to write a book, if you want to paint a painting, 
paint the painting, write the book. Don't expect it to be Mona Lisa. Mm. Don't expect it to be War and Peace or some famous book that's going to win you a Nobel Prize. Just write that book. If it comes out and you read it and it's a bit terrible, fine. You can rewrite it. You can do another book. It becomes, book. Of your book, becomes part of your story. Yeah, but don't, don't hold it in and go, no, I, I can only write this book if. I can only paint this painting if. You just have to do it. Start small. Don't overwhelm yourself. Because sometimes people have grandiose ideas or they think the book has to sell millions or the painting has to be amazing. Just for yourself, do it. Start small and, and keep it simple. Don't be overwhelmed. Especially for youth now, mm -hmm. just taking one step back there, uh, do you think that uh, it's important uh, if they feel they have the desire to do illustrations and perhaps want to do that in a very pro professional capacity, uh, do you advise them to uh, go to a college, uh, do some graphic designing, and then enhance their skills a bit more in a professional manner, and then go back to the drawing board? I think that's a very good idea, mm -hmm. because with illustration, my experience with illustration is, it really depends on what kind of illustration you're, you're doing. Because there's different kinds. There's textbook, there's gaming, there's advertorials, and there's a lot more illustration opportunities open now than there was previously, especially with uh, the um, the launch of, of, of games and, and um, well, I, think, I mean video games and the, those kinds of gaming art. So I think it would be beneficial to go study just so that you have a, a, a broad idea. And a good basis. And a good basis. Because I, I don't know if people actually do graphic design anymore, if it's called that, mm. or if it's called visual communication because mm. with the onset of the digitalization, um, yes. there's a whole bunch of different aspects that you have to deal with now from graphic design. So I, say, I would say uh, that doing some sort of uh, visual course is a good basis. Um, and then deciding from there where you want to specialize in illustration. Mm -hmm. Because you might have to do some studio work before you freelance on your own and get your own work out there. So definitely I would, I would think a basis is good. Just taking um, a, a brief regression on, on, an, on this particular uh, publication of yours, uh, the Asmal Husna, the 99 Names of Allah. Um, what was the inspiration for that? Because uh, there are many things that one can draw and illustrate, and there are many things that are happening from a topical point of view. And those could be politicians, they could be cars, they could be anything. Uh, what inspired this particular work? Well, it was actually over um, a meal with, with my, my brother and a, a couple of You mentioned your brother a lot. We're going to talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, very, he's very influential. Mm. Um, he, because I had the idea of doing just one coloring page, because at the time I had an online shop which sells um, digital downloads of a sort of one page each. So I thought, you know, I, I've got some, some, some clients that I think maybe would be interested in, in having a specific sort of Arabic flavored uh, or Islamic flavored uh, coloring page. And he was like, no, you know what, we should do a book. And from this conversation, the Asma Husna came out because it was perfectly suited for a book because it's sort of short, uh, short names that have nice possibility for geometric designs. Mm -hmm. And that's how the whole thing actually came about. I was busy with my first book at the time, mm -hmm. um, and so I had to finish that so I can get down to the Asma Husna. Interesting. So um, that brings me to my last uh, component of the interview, and that's uh, generally when you do this kind of thing, you're surrounded by people that assist you to do what you're doing, maybe in various aspects of that. Uh, they may form a motivation for you. Uh, you mentioned your brother a lot. Uh, I suppose there's some people you want to thank. Can you maybe want to tell me about what his role is? Well, what it, if I can just give a bit of history. Um, when I was doing the textbook illustration, um, it was mostly a stable income for me. And then what happened is the government said no submissions for five years, which means my stable income had vanished. Mm. And this is when my brother Mukhtar, he said, okay, do you have an Etsy store, which is an online store? And he set up my Etsy store, which is a place where I could sell my art and sell my, my products online. And then he got my, my website going and started with my social media. And he's, I, I'm so not- He's your agent and your he's, business he's been, manager. He's become my business manager, yeah. essentially. And without him, this wouldn't be possible because it's, I realize now having a product is one thing, Making the product, that, that's one thing. I, I could, could do that possibly on my own. But in terms of marketing it and getting it out there and 
coping with the business aspect of things, um, I'd be completely lost without him. So, um, yeah, a big thanks to my brother and my, my essentially my whole family and my, my parents especially because, like I say, in, in my community, it wasn't often um, done that you would encourage an artistic or a creative career. You'd, you'd encourage something a bit more practical, in quotation marks, like teaching or being a doctor or, or something like that. Great. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think that the uh, shape of the education has changed. And I think that um, the one thing that has changed over this time was that um, creative people need to come to the fore. They are actually the people that control the world, <coughs> oddly enough, uh, because they change the designs that you see every day, the brands. And this world is brand and consumerism driven. So the people behind all of that is actually people like yourself, the guys that illustrate that's able to, to, to change the way we perceive this world. And that's important. Mm -hmm. So I think that maybe your example is a good example to those people out there to be who they want to be. And I think that's the underlying story today is be who you want to be. But that's a, <laughs> I'm very honored you, 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 you've said that because I think that's a great example to be. If, 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 if I could be uh, an, an, an example of a kind of person, I would, I would like to be that kind, just to, like you say, be who you want to be because it's, it's difficult in um, today's society with all the influences on you. Correct, yes. Shamima, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, we put your details up on screen so people can find out where they can get your designs from and get your book from. Uh, we hope to find you back soon when the new edition is out. You can come and chat to us and we can catch up again with you. Thank you for that. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Shamima Dasi, and uh, she is the illustrator of the brand new Asmal Husna, The 99 Names of Allah, that you can now purchase. Um, it's very therapeutic. I'm going to try this out. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Goodbye.